This is the higher FD inverter refrigerator. The customer complained the refrigerator is not turning on, as when I see this refrigerator from its backside. It has been opened, and I think it wasn't repaired. Now I will open its motherboard. I will not pass electricity through it. I will check its motherboard directly to find out whether the motherboard has any issues. Someone has already worked on this motherboard. The screw is not attached to this hole, and the other in this hole, as two screws are tightened at the bottom holes. Let's unscrew these both. If I see the physical condition of this board, I have figured out the problem on the front side. I couldn't find any physical damage on the back side of this control board. It seems to be new from the back side. But the front side of this power board has a problem. You can see this capacitor over here is flat. But this capacitor installed with the SMPS circuit has been bulged up. If this capacitor has blown, then it means that any other component in the motherboard could be faulty. The first component to check in the motherboard will be its fuse. The fuse of this motherboard is not beeping on continuity. This means the fuse of the motherboard is also bad. The next component I will check is the NTC sensor. It is looking fine in physical condition. As I am checking it, a 3.7 ohms reading is shown on the multimeter, which means this NTC sensor is fine. As we move forward, a bridge rectifier is installed. The cut made on the rectifier indicates that this is its positive side. I will start testing it. I am placing the negative probe on the positive pin. The positive probe on the negative pin. I have set the multimeter on diode mode. It is showing 0.525 voltage drop. On the next pin 0.496. The last pin also has a 0.496 voltage drop. This means the bridge rectifier is absolutely fine. I will now desolder the blown capacitor out of the motherboard. First, I am adding solder on its pins. The capacitor has come out of the motherboard. This is a 22 microfarad 450 volts capacitor. This is a T5A and 250 volts. This means a 5 amperes fuse is installed in this motherboard. I have installed the new capacitor in the fuse. But we didn't take a look at these ZNR. Because if this ZNR gets short circuit, they could cause the issue. I will set the multimeter on ohm mode. The one ZNR is installed on the right, and the second on the left. Let's test them both. The ZNR should not show a reading on the multimeter. If the multimeter show readings on the ZNR, then this is possible that the ZNR is short circuited. This ZNR is OK. Now let's check this second ZNR. This ZNR is short circuited. I had a doubt about the ZNR, that it could be problematic. Let me tell you how I got to know it. Most of the time, when ZNR short circuits, they blow up physically. But this ZNR has a protective cover on it. And it is not blown. Instead, it has turned the board black beneath it.
I have now installed a new ZNR in this PCB. The fuse and the capacitor have also been changed. I didn't check the switching IC on this motherboard. Because it may be possible that this switching IC is fine. So I will first test this motherboard by passing electricity through it. These pins on this motherboard are neutral. And the pin with the neutral is the line pin. The rest of the pins are for the output. I will install the electricity probes here. I will check this motherboard without its display first. I have turned on the electricity button. I will wait for a few seconds. And after 2 seconds, this blue relay has turned on to start the compressor. This means that this control board has been successfully fixed. If you ever clean or service your fridge, dry out the terminals of the compressor because if it is not dried out, this will make a short circuit. Other than this, let's check these connections. A PTC relay is installed with this compressor. An overload is installed with the relay. This is a PTC sensor for the soft start of the compressor. These three wires are installed with the relay. The brown wire will be installed with this terminal. Let's install it in the terminal. A blue wire is installed on the top terminal. The blue wire in my hand will be installed next to the blue wire terminal already installed in the relay. The black wire is left now. It will be installed on the top terminal of the relay. The relay connection for the compressor has been completed now. I will install the relay on the compressor terminals. Now I will install the connections of this motherboard. It is not that difficult. The connectors where I had removed from, will be installed on the same connections. No connectors can be exchanged with one another because all connectors have different sizes. These are plug and play connectors. The connections are completed. Now I have installed the main electric wire in the socket. I will turn on the electric switch. The display of the refrigerator has turned on. The compressor of this refrigerator has also started. The compressor is consuming 2.3 amps right now. The amperes will gradually decrease. Now the amperes have decreased, and the compressor is now consuming 1.4. As you saw, the display is turning on. I will press the button. The display is locked. I will open the lock of the display. The lock has opened. The refrigerator is showing us the freezer's temperature. And when I click temp zone, now it is showing the fridge compartment temperature. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.